Hello students, welcome to NAC Biology. Today we are going to discuss about the main covering that is the boundary of the cell that is nothing but plasma membrane. This is also known as cell membrane. So this is what the structure I have drawn is nothing but the cell membrane or plasma membrane. This plasma membrane gives general function we are talking which gives proper shape and structure to the cell. In the beginning of the session I told that the cell can be of different shape. This is because mainly achieved by this plasma membrane and it acts as a selectively permeable membrane. Selectively permeable means it will not allow all the substance to move in and out. It will select the substance that means the nutrients will be enter inside the cell and some of the toxic materials which are so produced inside the cell that will be removed out that means it can select the substance it can select the material hence the name selectively permeable and other thing and one more function we can say that this plasma membrane which acts like a protective layer just like a wall of the house which gives protection to the cell and along with that there are so many materials so many ions so many substances that can actively transport or passively transport or even through a process known as osmosis all this function takes place only with the help of this plasma membrane so i am going to do a separate video based on the material transport in come upcoming session now we'll just only talk about the structure of this plasma membrane this plasma membrane contributed by two materials are Generally, we can say the plasma membrane is made up of two substances that is phospholipids as well as the proteins. Phospholipids consist of two parts that means one is head region, another one is the tail region. So if I just draw the structure, this is what the head portion of the paspolipid and it consisting of two tails which is of two fatty acids that is what the tail part. So this head region is hydrophilic in nature. This is hydrophilic head, hydrophilic phosphate head and these two are nothing but fatty acid, fatty acid tail which is of hydrophobic in nature hydrophobic in the sense water hating philic means water loving okay like that it also made up of proteins the proteins again are of two types one is intrinsic protein and another one is extrinsic protein intrinsic protein is also known as integral protein Extrinsic protein is known as peripheral protein. Okay. So these phospholipids which are joined each other like this. There are so many heads. They are joined like this. And along with that the tail will be present here. They form one particular layer. This is one layer. Like that one more lipid layer with the head and the tail they join form lipid bilayer so if i just draw a cell it shows that is nothing but the membrane consisting of bilayer lipid we call we call it as bilayer phospholipids bilayer phospholipids okay so if i just draw this bilayer it looks like this So the entire membrane consisting of this bilayer phospholipids. Here the head portion will be facing outside. This is the hydrophilic in nature. And once again even inside the cell that is the cytosol is also faced by the hydrophilic head. And these tail together will be present inside. That is they are uh, opposite to each other. The one layer tail and another layer tail both are coincide or merged within this particular membrane. Right. So the membrane not only consisting of lipid along with that I said it also consisting of proteins. If I just take only this particular part of the membrane how we can draw the protein here suppose this is the lipid 
layer bilayer lipid if it is a case of intrinsic protein i told there are two types of proteins intrinsic and peripheral protein the intrinsic protein can be of different shape or can be of different depth some proteins can be present only half of the lipid bilayer that can be passed only half of the lipid bilayer and another lipid will be present here only that is the lipid molecule and some proteins this is one of the integral protein and some integral protein can pass through the lipid bilayer completely like this okay so such a integral protein we call it as tunnel protein so these are nothing but the tunnel protein tunnel proteins are also known as transmembrane protein it is also known as trans membrane protein transmembrane protein this is the part of intrinsic protein and extrinsic protein or peripheral proteins are one which are present on the surface of these lipid molecules that is on the head region like this suppose this is the protein which is just present on surface superficially or peripheral region so this is nothing but the extrinsic protein if we have to extract the extrinsic protein it is a, it is very easy to detach it from the lipid bilayer but if we have to remove this intrinsic protein we have to destroy the entire layer that is the entire bilayer or nothing but the plasma membrane itself okay and there are few more substances like glycoproteins as well as the glycolipids are also present on the surface of this membrane glycoproteins are one say for example here is a ex extrinsic protein on the surface of the extrinsic protein if a carbohydrate molecule is present imagine this is the carbohydrate which act as a receptor are present on this protein then such a carbohydrate portion we call it as glycoprotein that means the protein consisting of carbohydrate molecule glyco refers to carbohydrate in the same way if the uh, protein molecules are the carbohydrate molecules which are present on the lipid part on the surface of the lipid part suppose if i have to show you here suppose this is the lipid head and on the surface of it if the uh, carbohydrate part is present then we call it as a glycolipid glycolipid so these are all the components which are present in the plasma membrane okay and this intrinsic protein can also act as a carrier protein or channel protein okay so carrier protein is one which will be having a separate receptor on its membrane okay suppose this is a carrier protein which is present here just imagine this is the carrier protein is present then what happen in this carrier protein there is a receptor is present say this is the receptor the ion it may comes from outside the cell or it may have to go out of the cell then it will come and bind here okay and after that once it bind to the receptor it will change its configuration such a way that the configuration will be gets changed like this so that this ion will be move to the opposite direction and that will be exit out wherever it has to go suppose if it has to go inside it will be uh, this portion will be just combines together or if it has to go outside then this portion will get combines together okay so this is how the carrier protein will transfer the material from one side of the cell to other side so that's what i told just now i will tell in detail i will do a separate video for this particular topic that is how the material will be transferred from out that means inside or outside the membrane through a process known as active transport or passive transport all those things i'm just explaining what are these proteins will do okay and the channel proteins are once again it is also like this it acts as ion gated channel it will helpful for the movement of sodium and potassium ions to move inside and outside the membrane based on the concentration gradient okay so this is what the entire function as well as the structure of the plasma membrane thank you for watching